want to start by saying thanks to all of you on behalf of David and his family for being here today to support them, to help them shoulder the work of grieving, but also today the work of celebrating. As usual, this is a service in two parts. We'll be here in God's house for the first part. Afterwards, you're invited directly out the door and make a quick left into the fellowship hall for a luncheon and a time to uh, greet the family, support the family, share stories with each other as well. From the book of Ecclesiastes, these words. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to let go, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. The God of peace spoke to us through his son Jesus and said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even though they die, yet shall they live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. We are gathered in Christ's name, our hope for the resurrection. We're also gathered to give thanks for the life of Mary Lynn Ratterink, who was born May 11, 1964, and began the part of eternal life that we commonly call heaven on October 15, 2022. On the day of her baptism, told she wore white and today we cover her in white once again as bookends to the promises made on the day of her baptism that God would be her God always would never let her go and that promise is still in force and so when God makes a promise God keeps that promise and St. Paul talks about that promise in Romans 6 when he says, do you not know that we who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. I invite you to reach for a red book if there's one handy, and we're going to sing How Great Thou Art. You don't need a red book. I'm sorry. What am I thinking? <laughs> All the words are on the screen.
knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit are with us. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister, Mary Lind. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading is the familiar 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A second reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, comfort my people says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Near the end of the book of Revelation is a favorite passage of mine. It's the one that describes what is called the Lamb's Book of Life. It's the one that shows up in a lot of comics as the one where St. Peter is standing at the pearly gates checking to see if your name's there. Well, on the day of her baptism, Mary's name was inked into that book of life. And that is reason enough for us today to, today to be a day of celebrating. If her name appears in the heavenly book, it also appears in an earthly book of life, one that might, might or might not be written down on paper but it's certainly written in the hearts and in the memories of those who shared life with her, whose path she crossed in different ways. And part of what's important about the second half of today is for you to share stories that you may know about her with David and mother and the rest. But I'm gonna call on brother David right now to put a few words of that book of life to, to voice. So if there was uh, one thing that my sister would be glad about today is that she was making me uncomfortable by being up here and speaking about her. <laughs> my sister and I are just over a year apart in age, um, she, and she's the younger sister. When we were little, uh, one of my first memories of her is we were both in preschool in different grades. and. Uh, teacher comes in and says to me, your sister's crying, she wants her brother. And so in comes Mary, and she sits down and spends the rest of the day with me, and uh, she was better. Uh, a few years later, um, across the street on uh, North Michigan, uh, from where my aunt lived, there was, uh, there was a Catholic church and there was uh, uh, a nunnery or convent or whatever they have like a big three-story house and some college students decided they were gonna have a Halloween uh, haunted house there and so we went and we get up to the door to go in and one of the characters 
slid something across the palm of our hands to, it was, I don't know, some kind of talc or something like that, but it freaked her right out. And she just started screaming and crying, and there's a whole line of people behind us, and we couldn't go anywhere. So we went through this whole haunted house with my sister glued to me right here, just crying and screaming the whole time. And, um, and we get done, and, and, and then she's okay. Um, but uh, I, I think I remember those things, was, those were the times when being the big brother that I could have her back and, and be there for her. Um, through, um, when, when we were younger, uh, everybody will know this, that my sister was not very girly. She did not want to wear dresses um, and sometimes would get in arguments with my grandmother about that. Um, but yeah, and, and she'd win those arguments. And <laughs> <laughs> and she played sports with all the boys. Uh, we had uh, a neighbor, her name was Connie, and Connie was a tomboy, and my sister was not quite a tomboy as Connie was, but those two girls played all the sports, football, basketball, baseball, everything with the rest of us, and they weren't bad. Uh, and, so, and then uh, move into high school, uh, and because we're so close in age, we had many of the same friends. In fact, uh, the girl I took to my uh, freshman homecoming dance ended up being one of her best friends, Karen Paquette, and then one of her best, another one of her friends, um, I ended up taking to uh, senior homecoming dance. Um, so, and uh, there was a lot of friends that we shared together. I mean, we each had our own separate friends, but so we were very close. Um, and uh, because I was older and could drive first, it meant that I was chauffeuring her around a lot too. So, <laughs> and then um, um, then life happened. I I went on to s college and and school thereafter, and and Mary uh, uh, had other things to do, and she um, lived her life. She moved to Grand Rapids. Uh, I was married at a at a point in time. She uh, bought a pizza business and ran that for a while. Um, and the pizza was good. I went there one, I went over to visit her and uh, she put me to work in making pizza <laughs> and then yelled at me because I was putting too many toppings on it. So <laughs> and, um, and then um, she, she had some difficulties in her life and she um, uh, ended up moving down south and spent a, a good period of time in Mississippi. Um, and we kept in touch and most of our conversations were good, some of them not so good. Um, she used to call me Mr. Perfect and that was not a compliment in any way. Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, my, my grandfather who passed away several years ago um, set up a trust for Mary and uh, I managed that trust and she would get a certain amount every month to help support herself. And uh, in that trust, we had some stocks and things in there and uh, part of my job was to make sure that there was enough cash in there so that they could transfer that money every month over to her account. And sometimes I wouldn't do that. And that's when I would get a call from my sister. <laughs> Ask me where the money was. I'm like, just calm down. <laughs> It'll be there in a few days. Yes, I messed up. So, uh, <laughs> um, and um, unfortunately, uh, we, when we learned uh, how bad she had gotten from um, basically liver disease, uh, it uh, didn't really have a chance to talk with her. She um, was already kind of far gone by that time. I am relieved, though, that I was able to send my mother down to spend a few days with her before she passed, um, and then also to have the means to be able to bring her up here for this. So um, I, I miss my sister. Our relationship and her relationship with the rest of her family was sometimes strained but never broken. And. I'm glad she's finally at peace. Thanks. Reading from the Gospel of Luke. 
When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. I think we need to start by acknowledging that this is a tough day. If for no other reason, it is about as backwards a thing in the whole universe that a mother should be at the memorial service for her child. This is a day to acknowledge the pain that comes with loss and grief and dreams unfulfilled. On such a day as this, I can imagine Jesus standing at the door of the tomb of Lazarus, his good friend, with many of those same thoughts and feelings in his mind. But not long after Jesus wept for his friend, Jesus' friends were weeping for him as he was hanging on the cross. Not everyone was weeping, of course. There were plenty who had spit on him, beat on him, mocked him, cursed him, derided him, um, including one of the criminals that was hanging there on his side, but not the other one. We know nothing about this criminal who understood that he was getting what he deserved, um, but as he faced the last hours of his life, I cannot imagine that he wasn't thinking to himself, how did I end up in this place? What went wrong? What was the one decision I made that turned me on to a road that led to this? For me, dying alone and about to be forgotten. Was all that going through his mind at that last hour of his life? I don't know. What I do know is this, that he looked in the direction of Jesus and simply said, remember me. And there's the thing. That's one thing that God is especially good at. The God we know in Christ is especially good at remembering us. God may choose to not remember our sins and the wrongs that we've committed, but God always remembers God's children. And so Jesus looked back at that one thief and gave him some hope to hang on to during these last hours as his life came to an end. He reassured him in those, in just a few words, that no matter what roads he'd traveled that led him to this terrible ending, God had never stopped loving him. God had never stopped remembering him. God had never stopped having faith in him. That's what I hear contained in Jesus' words. Today, you will be with me in paradise. I never had the chance to meet Mary. I've learned a little bit about her from her family when we met earlier this week. But even if you had pulled me in off the street and said, we need a pastor to lead a memorial service, go. I know I could say the most important thing about her that anybody could ever say, and that is God is gracious. God's love for her never faltered, and God's faith in her never wavered. And so in that way, Mary is the same as you and me, and we are the same as she. We've all wandered off the path. Some of us have taken occasional little side trips. There are others, maybe in this room, maybe people you know who've taken long journeys to the far country like the prodigal son. Jesus is the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And when we've lost our way, he remembers he remembers where we belong, 
and he leads us back. During her life, Mary chose her own roads. That's pretty clear from what I've heard. But we give thanks today knowing that Christ has now led her home on the road that he is, the way that leads back to the heart of the Father and God's love and God's grace and God's forgiveness. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Let us pray. Almighty God and holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and a sure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and your life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior, Jesus Christ, has destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, he has opened the kingdom of heaven to all who believe. And so today, make us certain in our faith that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join with me as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend Mary Lynn to the mercy of Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Mary. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll sing once again, Amazing Grace.
Let us go forth in peace in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.